Any further public comment? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll close agenda item two, item two and move to agenda item three, which is discussion and possible action regarding the administrative and approval processes of the current redevelopment agency financial incentive programs and other matters properly related thereto. Mr. Baker. Mr. Chair, Board, uh, my name is Aaron Baker. I'm Andrew McCormick Development Redevelopment Director. I come before you uh, today seeking some direction and possible action uh, regarding the existing RDA financial uh, assistance programs. In the way of a little bit of background for you, these programs as they are right now, there have been forms that have existed in the past um, programs, but as they exist presently, were approved on April 14th, 2009. These are based on some recommendations from RBF Consulting. Uh, those recommendations were included in your backup material, I believe, that you received. Um, these, pro these processes that are in place right now for the approval process in the administration are part of the uh, Mesquite Municipal Code, excuse me, 1-10. Uh, and these programs do expire on June 30th of 2015, so there's a sunset. To give you an idea of the current uh, financial assistance programs that exist, there are three, four-ish, if I could say that. Um, the first is a building remodeling and rehabilitation program. This is for, just what it says, building remodeling and rehabilitation of buildings or facilities, property that are within um, the, uh, the area. And that's up to $99,999. Now, we've never had anyone come near that, uh, but that's the uh, th current threshold that's been established. Um, the next, the facade rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Think of this as uh, the window dressing, the skin on the outside of the building. Um, that's up to 50000 And the sign replacement program, depending mm -hmm. on where you are in town, um, it's up to $15,000. Now, associated with these, uh, we have a program that will reimburse depending on the percentage agreed upon, again, uh, city-related fees. Now, that's not a standalone program. That's in conjunction with participation in one of the other three programs. That's up to $30,000. And those, like I said, are city-only fees. Those are OPD or Virgin Valley Water District. So those are your programs right now as they exist on the administrative approval level. Now, approvals that exist outside um, of these programs that the RDA board has made in the past, of, an example would be the former Courtyard Plaza, uh, Mr. Jeff Stifler's building that he proposed, or the parking structure associated with that that was approved by the RDA board. However, his project did not move forward. Um, another example of a non-traditional um, financial assistance that the RDA has given would be a, the uh, solstice loan as well. So um, today, I'm seeking direction from you uh, regarding two main things. Based on feedback, um, we're seeking direction regarding the current administrative and approval processes for the programs. Um, and the feedback that we've received can be reduced down to two overarching themes, trust and control. Um, does the RDA board trust the current process? Does the RDA board need greater control over the approvals? So those are two questions to bear in mind. And the other point that we're seeking direction on is direction regarding the processing of RDA financial assistance applications right now. So that being said, let's dive into this first point of administrative and approval processes. Um, there are three options available to you, and there are obviously more as well, but these three are the are the main ones. Mm -hmm. The first one is to leave the administrative administrative and approval processes as is. And just to provide um, a little bit of background for those who are unfamiliar with the current process, if I may, um, under the current process, a property owner or business owner turns in an application, redevelopment staff reviews the application for completeness, the application eligible, eligible expenses are reviewed by a staff committee. The committee then makes a recommendation, the mayor then reviews the recommendation, if the mayor agrees with it, um, or it would be chair, I guess I should say, if the chair agrees to proceed with the project, staff then drafts an agreement with the owner which the owner and the chair both sign. At an RDA meeting, staff can also provide periodic updates to the board about, these, about those participating in the financial incentives. If for some reason a participant or an applicant is dissatisfied with the administrative decision, um, there is a process built in that allows them to appeal the decision to you, the, the full board. Um, the board can then affirm, modify, or reverse the administrative decision. So that's, op that's option one, that's the process right now. Before I moved on to option two, do you have any questions regarding the current process? 
Mr. Baker, I have a question. What amount is this uh, committee, along with the chair, allowed to approve? What's the what's the limit? Is that the ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars? Yes, ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, fifty thousand and fifteen, and up to thirty and C related fees. Okay. Those are what were approved um, by the previous RDA board. Okay. Councilman Hafen. So, <clears throat> just so I'm clear on this, the uh, the ninety nine thousand fifty and the fifteen mm -hmm. staff and the mayor, if they approve it, it's a done deal. As it as the process currently stands, right. yes. Right. And, and just so you're aware as well, Councilman Haven, um, stacking these programs, if they were to stack them and go over that, uh, go over $100,000, those would come to the board um, because there are some statutory triggers that are tripped at that point. Um, if someone wanted to participate in multiple programs at the same time, it went over that amount. So, Councilman Whitman. Who uh, currently consists of the committee? The committee con con currently is um, the city manager, the director, um, the associate, a member of planning staff, and a member of finance. So. Councilman Withelder. Thank you, Mayor. I don't mean to jump around, Aaron, but um, can, can you give me an idea of exactly uh, where we are with the former courtyard plaza? What, what, the the what project is, is dead. It, the disposition is it's, it's just gone. totally, totally, totally gone. gone. Totally gone. And Mr. Mr. Stifler's interest in the property is now gone, and one of the um, other parties who had a financial interest in the, bar, in the property bought that property. They, someone else bought it from Mr. Stifler? They bought it out of bankruptcy court. Out of bankruptcy. And Mr. Stifler no longer lives in town, is that correct? I believe he moved to I, 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 Southern California. I could not speak to that. Okay. I don't know if Mr. Stifler is here or not. He and I have not had contact, shall we say. Okay, thank you. Okay, there are some other real strengths and uh, possible improvements to option one. You can look at those, those are in your packet. I don't want to belabor that <coughs> point. Um, option two is to adjust the administrative funding approval levels. If the board desires greater control over individual projects but still wants to periodically utilize the current business friendly process, the board could approve the new amounts for administrative approval. Um, if I may say, uh, while option two appears to be the best, the best of both worlds, it does not address the underlying issues of control and trust. The programs were amended in 2009 to help uh, relieve some of the control that businesses felt that the previous programs um, put in place. Increasing control could be perceived as taking a business unfriendly step backwards. So that's option two. And then again, in your packet, there are some uh, strengths and weaknesses um, involved in option two. Option three would be to have the RDA board approve or disapprove all applications. Rather than having the mayor and redevelopment director approve the application, the RDA board could, have, could approve or deny all financial assistance applications. If an applicant were dissatisfied with that decision, they could appeal to the city council. Uh, currently, the RDA board and the city council are the same people, but they don't have to be uh, statutorily. Staff could intake the application, review it for completeness, and verify that the uh, application complies with program guidelines. And again, there are some strengths and areas for possible improvement associated with that as well in your packet. So, processing of new applications. Um, I guess before I segue out of this, um, are there any other questions about options two or three or one? Go ahead. Okay. Um, processing of new applications. The RDA. For the RDA programs, um, as they stand right now, are funded out of the tax increment, um, not the RDA bond. They are funded out of the increment, which is the property tax that's been collected. Um, we are, the RDA is currently not processing applications um, because of previous commitments uh, for the indoor sports center. Um, if you decide to have staff move forward and begin processing applications on this, uh, there may be diminished funds available for the indoor sports center. That's the end of my presentation that I have for you. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Quick question. Um, of this funding that we have available to us, building, remodeling, rehabilitation, 
facade rehabilitation, uh, sign replacement. How many applications have we received for building and remodeling in rehab? And then just go down through the rest of them. In the history of the program? In the history of the program. Seven building remodeling and rehabilitation and one sign replacement. So we've never received any applications for facade rehabilitation? Some facade improvements have been rolled into the building remodeling and rehabilitation program. Okay. Um, rather than making someone fill out two applications, we've said you're under the limits. Okay. So, so basically eight applications? Yes. Thanks. Councilman Haven. Just a question on the, uh, you said previous commitments. And I'm going back to the uh, MISC. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that we're going to find out what that commitment might cost, but I don't know. It, has there been a commitment made from the RDA to fund that thing? No, there's not been a hard commitment. That's why we're coming to you today to ask for that commitment one way or another of, do you want us to continue to hold, or do you want us to begin processing applications? Are there Have there been people come in that been told that there's been commitments made on that money, and so they you told them to hold the application? Yes. How I many? Probably five or six. No, I, I will say in the past, you know, just like anything else, you do get people questioning whether or not they actually want to go through with that process. Uh, six inquiries. inquiries. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, five or six inquiries. And I have kept those names, by the way. Councilman Rapson. Breaker, how many uh, actual applications have been filed? Uh, you said there's been five or six inquiries, but applications? Actually turned in to me? Yeah. None. We are. Councilman Haven. But if they were told that you're not taking applications. I mean, it's pretty hard to know whether there was some legitimate right. applications or not. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement, yes. Thank you. Councilman Withheller. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Baker, uh, obviously you, you have maintained a list uh, on the, the, the seven inquiries you had with the building, remodeling, and rehabilitation programs up to the, the $100,000 mark. Do you have them, you happen to have them in your office or on file or somewhere where I could eventually get a look at them or review them at some point. Um, are you talking about people who, those seven are people who previously participated in the program? No, no, the, the, the seven that uh, you indicated there, there had been seven. Five or six, yeah. And, and you have those names? Yes, I do. Uh, could, and you can share those with me at some point? Certainly. Thank you. Certainly, as a board member, yes. Further questions, Councilman Withelder? Or are you, okay. Uh, Councilman Gus Davidson. Thank you, Mayor. Could you give us an idea of, of those five or six, kind of the nature of them? Are they, are they signed re replacements? Are they major, minor? Uh, some of them have just been in generalities. Um, some people have moved forward with their improvements. Um, some people have not. Um, some people have moved forward, like I said, with the improvements as I've just driven by their property and seen that they decided not to wait. That's just as a business decision that they made. Um, others have not made those improvements to the property. Some are facade improvements. Some are um, remodeling of existing buildings. Um, it just kind of depends. Because all of these have been, in, have been general conversations. None of them have been specific. So I apologize. I don't have specifics to give to you. I can just say, generally speaking, two thirds, let's say, let's say four of them have been for building remodeling and two have been for facade. Councilman Haven. But at this point, there's no time constraint for additional spending of RDA funds. I mean, That's correct. That, that would be bond proceeds. Okay. And these programs are not funded, funded out of bond proceeds. It's out of tax increment. Right. But at one point, we... There were, there were some constraints. Um, yes. And those are gone. Those are gone. Those obligations have been met, I should say. Mr. Baker, for the public... Uh, for the, their, their benefit, can we, um, can you explain what requirements people have when they do sign up, whether or not they're going to receive funding? What, what are the basic fundamental steps they have to go through in order to receive funding from the RDA? Sure. 
Sure. A property owner or a business owner may approach um, may approach the RDA, and the first criteria, the first threshold that's put in place is the project needs to enhance properties and businesses within the redevelopment area. Um, there are times when financial incentives may be offered to offset development and impact fees, um, which may be a hurdle uh, for certain development to come into place. But generally, the way these work is someone comes in, they approach they approach. So the RDA, we work with them to help them establish eligible expenses. Um, there are certain improvements that are not eligible. Uh, those improvements that are eligible are those that will remain with the property through various property owners. An example of this would be um, Peggy Seuss currently. It used to be Home Plate Diner. Home Plate Diner participated in an RDA grant. They improved their outdoor seating area right there. Um, that was through one of our programs. And um, now it's available for Peggy Sue's to use as well, so it runs with the property. It's not anything that is can be taken out. Um, we've had to tell people no for televisions and coolers and other things like that. Um, but as those improvements run, we examine that list, um, the committee reviews it, um, and then it is where you agree upon a fixed amount based on three bids. We take the lowest bid, um, and then we enter into a contract that says, I. We will reimburse once you have paid your contractors. They're responsible. The RDA does not pay the contractors. Um, once you have paid and shown proof of payment for all of your payment for all of your obligations, we will then reimburse you on, on the back end, fifty percent of the agreed upon amount or what you actually paid, whichever is less. So it, 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 it's a system built in to catch anything. So if there's someone trying to game the system, it automatically eliminates that. So if they said, "I don't want to do this," that improvement's gone. <laughs> they're not going to get reimbursed for it either. Um, once that's done, they go forward, they get the necessary permits, they do their work, and then they show at the end cancel checks or lien releases, and once those proof of payments given, we then issue a check. Thank you, Councilman Litton. A question for Mr. Baker. In, in the 2010 guidelines, which I didn't bring a copy with me, uh, I believe they talk about the emphasis of spending the money in the downtown corridor that's correct. But we're still talking about, quote, the whole redevelopment zone. Is that the way we're going, or are we still looking at 2010 guidelines, or no, are the guidelines void? No, no, the guidelines are in place. They, they've never changed. Uh, there's never been any proposal to change them since they were initially approved. Uh, those guidelines do provide greater emphasis for the, the downtown area with a greater reimbursement percentage of 75%. Um, and areas that are in the redevelopment district south of Interstate 15, but not in the downtown, that's 50%, if that makes sense. Um, and the, the properties that are in tax district 902 or 903 that are north of the interstate are not eligible to participate in these programs at this time. Now, if, if I may say this as well, uh, redevelopment agency dollars have been spent um, in areas north of town, not through these programs though. An example of that would be the police station, where that was a budget item, um, and so it's a different animal. Councilman Gus Davison. Can you tell us uh, the funds that have been accumulated so far in the RDA? Where those funds have, have uh, been generated from? You mean in the sense of property tax? And where have they been generated from? Uh, properties in tax district 902 and 903, which are scattered throughout Mesquite, both on the north and the south side of the interstate. If you'd like, I believe that there's a map available on the city's website. If you would like to see that, we can show that as well. What about all of the businesses on the north side? Some businesses are in tax district 902, and some are not. Um, for example, all the businesses in Falcon Ridge are. Town and country is not. So the majority of the money, in fact, really has, has come out of the, the commercial zone space on the north side. The majority of the money has actually come from our casinos. They are our largest RDA taxpayers far and away, um, especially Mesquite Gaming. Councilman Hafen. A couple questions. If you could briefly explain the different animal with the police station. You know, you talked about just, I don't want a long dissertation, right. but if you could explain that. And the second question is, um, 
with the way it exists, which is basically option one, right, with the funding of it and the approvals, does that, that process doesn't come to before a, a public hearing. I mean, basically, the staff and the mayor signs it's a done deal and, and the citizens find out about it later. Is that? The way the programs work right now, if I could answer that question, then I'll answer your, your mm -hmm. um, other question. The way the programs work right now is, yes, there are certain administrative thresholds set in place. Um, with, uh, redevelopment staff can provide an update to you as often as you would like. If you'd like those before, that can be provided at your discretion. As it currently works right now, though, there are times when the public would find out after the fact, yes. Um, as to your question about the police station it being a different animal, it's not a uh, RDA grant to enhance properties and businesses within the redevelopment area. It's, it's a budgetary line item that was approved by a previous council and board to expend um, RDA, in this case it was bond proceeds, um, in, in an area to do a specific project. And those are through the that's through the budgetary process that that's approved. <clears throat> so this is not a, in the budget there's a lump sum for these programs. Um, it's not a line, project by project lined out in the budget. Um, there's a lump sum and other projects are treated the same way as the police station, shall we say. What's the current fund available that we would have for our VA projects right now? For these? these financial assistance programs? Financial assistance programs. In the upcoming budget, it's pro it is proposed to be $135,000. Okay. The most that's ever been spent in a fiscal year, if you give me just one second, I have that information here with me. The most that's ever been spent in a fiscal year was fiscal year 10, and that was $54,495.72. So we've not come close to the ultimate budget amount, and that money just then rolls over to the next year. Can you address just quickly, and I know we're moving along here, um, the RDA in the downtown central business district, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's a patchwork. I mean, you've got a building here that's in it, this building's not, this building is, I understand why that happened and how it happened. They were given a choice whether or not they wanted to be a part of the RDA. This building is in the RDA, this one isn't, this one is. Can the one that isn't in the RDA get some kind of funding? That would be, based on the, these current program guidelines, that would be something that the board would approve. It is, if it is without the district, that could come before you. Um, NRS does provide for enhancement of properties that are within or without the RDA that have a direct benefit to the RDA. Okay. So you don't necessarily have to be in 902 or 903. <coughs> um, if you're adjoining or if it would have some sort of benefit to those two districts, um, then you can make a nexus there. Okay. Councilman Lindman. So if the building, let's see how I word this, if the building's not in the RDA and they ask for some money, it wouldn't necessarily come before the RDA board, though. That decision would be made if, if we went with option one. No, they, no. They would stay with you, correct? No, no. Under, it under, it would still come to you, even under option one as it currently exists. We do not approve any financial assistance for properties outside of 902 or 903. Okay, so they still have to come. They would still come, yes. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing no further questions, would a council member like to entertain a motion? Councilman Ramson. No, I'm not, not ready for a motion yet. I think I think I need to. I mean, voice my 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 concerns or my my opinion on a couple of the issues. There's two issues in front of us. I think one is the option one, two, or three, and how this uh, process works, and the second is with respect to the funds being dedicated to a project that's not yet been essentially approved and at the expense of those who are trying to develop businesses in town, potential. One, as I, as I said before, I'm a big proponent of the indoor sports facility, but as I've also said before, if all we've given is $50,000 a year, on average, and if that is the straw that breaks that camel's back, we shouldn't be doing it anyway. So my opinion is 
we need to continue doing what this mandate has been for the last 15 years as far as I know or whatever is to help emerging businesses or existing businesses with the criteria that's, that's laid out here. The second thing is with respect to the process, one, two, or three, um, there is, I mean, it's a, we hear how unfriendly we are to business and the post to, to get the council for everything, which could be a $3,000 sign or it could be a matching, you know, $5,000 this or that, for everything to go to council. I don't know if it's worth the five or six or seven week wait versus the two week process that we have in place today. Um, I don't see the volume of applications increasing. I don't, I haven't seen anything that was, that, that really causes me concern historically that we funded that shouldn't have been funded. So I'm fairly confident that, that staff has the ability to make these decisions. They've done it well. I'm, I'm okay with option one. Councilman Haven. I concur with Councilman Ramson on the uh, on the application process, and uh, you know, if, if people want to come in and request RDA funds, I think we need to open that back up today, not put a cap on it because we previously committed to something which I don't think we have. So I would like to see that we uh, open that back up. So if somebody comes in and wants some RDA fund, we can take the application, go through the process, and and try to accommodate those uh, applicants. Um, I don't have a problem with option one other than the fact that if, if, if we do have somebody that comes in and requests 999, we're spending public money. I, I think that the public has a right to know where that money's gonna go and I think that we, we need to have some kind of a process where the public can come in and, and uh, voice some support or concern. Um, that's the concern I have with, with option one. I, I'm, with George, I don't think that we need to see every $3 sign, $3,000 sign, or whatever, but I think that there, you know, there are some limits of, of where they ought to come before the old city council and the public ought to have some input on, on the, where that, that funds are going to be spent. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Withhelder. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Baker, you indicated last year that we we uh, approved somewhere around fifty-five thousand dollars. Is that correct? Okay. Whatever that number was, fifty-seven. That exact number for you. Give me just one second here. I have in my notes. Fiscal year eleven was fiscal year ten was approximately fifty-five thousand dollars. Fiscal year eleven was thirty-nine four seventy-nine. Can can you tell me? Precisely where those funds were allocated to, or, or where they went. Of the projects. Yes. Yes, I can. In fiscal year ten, uh, the two main projects that participated in the the two projects that participated in the building, remodeling, and rehabilitation were the general store and the portrait company. In eleven, it was Arnez LLC, um, which is where uh, Home Plate Diner, uh, Peggy Sue's. And then Stevens Hair, Desert Winds Plaza, which is a uh, which is a just due west of the intersection of Ski Boulevard and Grapevine, right there. Um, then Premier Hospitality, which was Home Plate Diner, and then Virgin Valley uh, Food Bank. And none of those were incrementally uh, large enough to, to come for us for approval or whatever they were done yeah. on the. The largest one in, in ten was $29,288.97. That was the portrait company. Um, and then again in 10 was the general store at 25,206. Um, and then in 11, the largest was 18, 18,000. And there are a couple of thousand, 2,352 dollars was another one. Well, I, I think I agree with Mr. Rapson. Um, We, we certainly could cut out some of the fat by bringing some of that stuff to us if necessary, if you can do it on a, on a local board level without bringing it to us and wasting a lot of time and effort. If we can expedite it and get it done in, on a local level in a couple of weeks rather than 
prolonging the agony seven or eight weeks, whatever, between council meetings, especially through a hot summer. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your help. I'm going to concur with uh, Councilman Hafen. Um, I know it's been brought to my attention that I have the right to sign up to $99,000 away, and quite frankly, as a mayor, that's uncomfortable. That's a lot of money, uh, and I think there better be some, there better be a doggone good reason to do that and not do it publicly, but I, I, I can't find one, uh, quite frankly. Um, so I'll leave it to the council to decide how much they would like that figure to be, but I'm going to let them know that at $99,000, I'm extremely uncomfortable with, with that high of a level. Uh, Councilman Rapson first, then we'll go to uh, Councilman Littman and Councilman Hafen. I don't have any fundamental problem with putting a, a cap on this somewhere in between, whether it's 50% of any one of the particular line items. Um, but again, I, you know, there's got to be some de minimis amount that doesn't come to council because it would be, it, I think it, it just prolongs the agony for a potential business owner. Um, so I don't know what that number is. I don't have a, I don't have a problem whether it's 50% or it's 40% or it's 60%, whatever the number is. I don't, I don't have a fundamental issue with that. Councilman Littman and then Ms. Hunt. Go ahead, Councilman. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I'm, I'm prepared to make a motion on uh, one, of, one or both of the items that we're discussing, but uh, I'll defer to... Uh, okay, I've got a couple more comments. Karen first. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Hunt. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to point out that we have our POs at 25000 and above that, right, it has to come to council, so that might be a threshold for you. I don't know. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Gus Davison, I see, uh, hold one second, Councilman, sorry. Councilman Hafen, was your question answered? Okay. Uh, Councilman Gus Davison, go ahead, sir. It appears that the largest ones we've had, they were out $50,000. The largest one we've ever had is is twenty nine two eighty eight. Twenty nine. Yep. The next largest was twenty five. I think twenty five to me seems a little low, but whatever. I I agree with pretty much everybody here. I think ninety nine is far too much. But if you split that, that was fifty. I wouldn't have any problem with that. Either. Any further comments from council? Councilman Hafen. I would just concur with the recommendation of the with the purchase orders of 25. I think that's a good number that uh, keeps everything in balance, and I'd uh, recommend that in the motion. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Littman. Uh, now I'm prepared to make the motion if we're available. Okay. Uh, my first motion is to free up RDA funds effective as of the approval of this motion. And my second motion would be to continue using option one with a financial cap of $50,000 per item. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we want any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. That motion carries, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Thank you. We'll go with item number.